Next curve. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this episode of the Rethink Podcast. I'm Leonard Lee, Managing Director of Next Curve. And today, I have a very prolific analyst colleague of mine and founder of AdvidThink, Roy Chua, joining me to talk about making enterprise 5G a thing. And Roy, I want to thank you so much for joining me today. Wow, you know, you seem to be on a panel almost every day (laughs) is quite amazing. And uh, most certainly our friends at Quest Tech have been keeping both of us busy. But I mean, you're taking it to the stratosphere, my friend. I mean, it's pretty insane. Um, It's great stuff, but welcome back, Roy. Well, thank you, Leonard. Always good to be here and good to chat. I just have one word for you. It's called cloning. (laughs) (laughs) It's a metaverse, right? Whatever it is. Uh, Yeah, well, I I think you've already cloned yourself because I really honestly don't have any idea how you do it. Uh, But hey, my friend, uh, please introduce yourself. um, If folks in our audience don't know who you are, they should know who you are. But please uh, introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about uh, Avid Think and uh, some of the work that you do. Yeah, absolutely. And thank you again for the opportunity. So um, I'm Roy Chua, I'm principal at Abbott Think, and we're a small research and analysis firm um, focused on infrastructure technologies. And so we are not good at RF or optics, you know, optical stuff, but anything above that, anything that you virtualize, we care about all the way up to underneath sort of the container infrastructure is sort of where we touch. We don't touch applications and databases stuff, but anything that's virtualized, you see the word virtual in there or disaggregation, then we get interested. So that's the nature of our coverage area. And that, uh, unfortunately or fortunately, has gone crazy in the last few years. And so the coverage (laughs) has expanded dramatically. And we're trying to keep our head above the water with all the changes that are going on. So it's been been a challenge, but we, we try. Yeah. Well, yeah, unfortunately for you, everything has become virtualized yeah. and yeah. software defined and I know. Uh, I know. all that stuff. So, um, yep. too bad for you. Yep. Deal with it. <laughs> I, I, I'm trying. Really trying. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great. So, uh, hey, let's, let's get into this. Uh, and so, in this discussion, we're going to uh, cover the following. First, uh, what is the state of 5G? for the enterprise and private networks. And then what we will do is we will touch on um, what are some of the reasons why enterprises should consider 5G today? And how's it differentiated from Wi-Fi and other, you know, access technologies and uh, protocols uh, for different types of enterprise applications, right? Because not all all enterprise applications are the same. There's a really huge range of things that we can be looking at. And then uh, we'll jump into the topic of, or the question of what enterprise applications will differentiate 5G? And we'll close things off with what we both did in our panels that we moderated. We will address the question or at least our observations on the gaps that need to be filled to make 5G for the enterprise a thing. So what do you think? I think that's a good list. I don't remember all of it, but uh, I don't I'll, either. But we're yeah, going to give it a okay. shot. We'll, we'll make it up as we go along, as we always do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So you know, Roy, you and I, we've been on, we've been moderating a lot of panels with some uh, pretty amazing folks. Yes, absolutely. Very expensive folks in the the uh, vendor uh, universe as well as in the end user uh, universe, all looking at five G, trying to figure out how to make five G a thing in the enterprise. Um, I know that you and the research and work that you're doing, you're getting very deep into it. And, Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, you've done many uh, panels on that. We're doing the same thing on our side, right? I mean, and Mark has always been a thing for Next Curve and helping our clients figure out how to make sense of all this stuff. But yeah, I will ask you this question. So what what is your take? I mean, given, you know, we've had these conversations with the, the market, uh, and the uh, and the vendors, where are we with five G in the enterprise? Sure. So the vast majority of uh, private networks, cellular based private networks in the enterprise, um, just to be clear, uh, are still four G, four G LTE. Yeah. Right. So about eighty percent 
uh, about that and I think 20% is 5G and that's straight from our friends over at the leading vendors like the Nokia yeah. and Eric Ericsson's of the world. So that's I think that's clear. Uh, but cellular technologies is pretty interesting for the enterprise in the specific use cases that I'm sure we're going to be talking about. Mm -hmm. um, and there are multiple hundreds, maybe thousands of deployments, but that's about it so far, right? So Nokia, who claims to be the leading vendor, which I, I do believe in the enterprise, going both direct and through CSPs, communication service providers, yeah. has about 380. So the last count, there was 380 customers, not installations, but 380 yeah. customers. Uh, and that's been growing rapidly over the last few years. I think it was 250 last year and 380 this year. So despite the pandemic, they've added 130 more customers um, to that. So certainly it's not tens of thousands, right? It's not even probably yeah. five or three thousands, but yeah. Yeah. probably safely say, you know, if, if Nokia is the leading vendor in the 380, somewhere yeah. in the 800 to 1000 installations, maybe a little bit more um, yeah. today, right? So yeah. that's, I think, the state of where it is right now. Right. And the other state is, it's mostly 4G LTE with 5G oh, no. coming online. So I think that's the reality. Right, right. And in terms of venues, I mean, we're really talking uh, largely some of these larger venues like, um, uh, you know, airports, that's ports, et cetera. Right. That's I mean, that's really airports, what we're talking about. Airports, uh, mining, right? The Rio Tinto mines that right. sort of started this whole thing as well. So, yeah, the mines, the ports, some in industry 4.0 type industrial applications. Right, a right. Couple of limited retail, and that you know, right. that's the, the majority of it so far. Um, right, right, it, right. Yeah, it's interesting that you bring up Rio Tinto because, um, you know, uh, the uh, there's a lot of talk of these mines, but Rio Tinto has had an autonomous mine for a very long time, more than have. a decade. They have, you correct. Know? Yes, um, and that kind of precedes for uh, you know LTE. So, it, uh, it, uh, they, yeah, they, it, it, it's they were automated first. That's correct. Yeah, I mean, we yeah. use it as a. Yeah, but it's it's kind of like unique situation. But there are other mines. Right. Um, I know that in China, with with Huawei and right. China Mobile, that there are the same type of deployments uh, mm -hmm. in mines in China as well. Yeah, for private 4G and private 5G as well. So that's less known, but they are talking about those use cases as well in China. That's right, cool. right. Yeah, and you know, and my my take is this: that outside of some of those initial pioneering. Um, uh, scenarios or, um, you know, sites, I, I, I don't know what you call it, but uh, I mean, there, there's a lot of pilots going on, right? Yeah, so, so it's the vast majority of pilots, that's correct. Yeah, that's and, correct. Yeah. And, and even I think among uh, some of those commercial engagements that are going on right now, even the LTE, I mean, there, there's a lot of piloting going on. There is. Um, it, it's, it's just the general impression that I get. So, mm -hmm. it, you know, it, but if we were to sit there and look at 5G uh, in particular, uh, you know, um, like you said, it's still very early days. It right? is very early days, at. right? Yeah. I mean, Sports Arena, we know of the private 5G, uh, some of the trials that have been run, you know, by the Verizon, AWS, you know, with NFL, right? We know right. education, which is not so much private 5G, but private 4G LTE over CBRS, right? Band 48 in school districts in California, some school districts yeah. in Las Vegas during a pandemic for sort of neighborhood access, right? Yeah, Low right. Yeah. So those have been pretty successful, I would say, actually. So it's promising. Oh. I think it's promising. I think some of the early signs are that there is value in there. It is promising, but it's... Again, the hype is just, as always, right, a little too much. Right. Yeah, and I, I don't know if I would really, I would bundle in um, schools and education into sort of this enterprise bucket, you know. Right. Um, and I, I think the question is, st the, the question that still needs to be answered is, um, well, the next next question that we're going to address, which is, what are the reasons why enterprise really needs need to consider 5G? Uh, you know, especially considering, I mean, there's a lot of debates going on right now. It's like, is it, you know, you should, you know, is it Wi-Fi and 5G and can, is it a either or, or can it be a blend or blah, blah, blah. But I mean, bottom line, why, what, what's your impression in terms of why an enterprise uh, sure. will be, should be impressed uh, yeah. today, not mm -hmm. in the future, given, you know, 5G still has a long way to evolve. Perfect. Yep. Today, why why should an enterprise uh, start looking at five G as a connectivity option? Yeah, so 
couple of reasons um and you are correct that i mean so there's there's two alternatives generally speaking right there's wired networks ethernet networks and there's wi-fi yeah. networks and and generally speaking you know at a high level is the wired networks give you the performance characteristics characteristics that you want but they are expensive to expand and expensive to maintain right and so that's one of the challenge and they're inflexible they're more rigid right you, you know sure. uh, wi-fi gives you the flexibility but wi-fi so far has been plagued with you know coverage issues sometimes handouts from AP to AP is device dependent and the, the, the device yeah. decides. And so you have those challenges and some of the other elements is that spectrum's getting crowded, although now with 6E, you know, you can get to six yeah. gig. Uh, so that's some of the problems. The other one's predictability. The predictability uh, and reliability of the performance in yeah. Wi-Fi is sometimes, I mean, we know this, right? I mean, we, yeah. we, you know, we you know, use a laptop, you use a phone, you right. know, on a Wi-Fi network, you get those all the time. You know, when you do voice over Wi-Fi, especially you get, you can actually feel it or hear it. And so I think some of the reasons that we see a sort of spectrum where, you know, 5G, private 5G with CBRS or shared license or other elements gives you more options from a license, spectrum license standpoint. And you can right, even right. dedicate it if you so desire. Right. Um, US, you could get PAL, you know, yeah. a priority access license, or you can go work with the MNO, mobile right. network operator and get something. Um, so I think that's one of the, 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 the advantage of sort of 5G. I mean, the other element is the, the, the latency, uh, latency and the QoS controls that yeah. even 4G, I mean, 4G and 5G give you better controls over that, pre even pre-slicing, right? Even right, pre-slicing, right, right. we're not there yet, exactly. but even that gives you that. And sometimes there is a consideration for public-private mobility, where if you're on the same technology, then you, you potentially can do that mobility private public, although that's still right. that's still early on. Yeah, um, yeah. And then from a coverage standpoint, if you're in a, a dense industrial situation, right, yeah. in, indoors, uh, yeah. what we've seen is that 5G and 4G LTE provide you with better coverage um, in, in indoors. And then in some right. situations where you have outdoors, you have much better coverage from a single AP or single radio, right, than yeah. Wi-Fi. So it's roughly rule of thumb right. working with the vendors is about 4X. Mm. Yeah, so one radio can cover 4X, the the, spa the, 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 the 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 coverage area, square foot area indoors, and they can do 10X outdoors. And so for right. some for some deployments, that's pretty compelling, right? Right, um, right. Yeah, and I mean, if we were to look at the whole bucket, I mean, so it's interesting. You've named off uh in one breath or several breaths yeah uh, a a broad diversity of different scenarios and um use cases and the reason why i'm stumbling with use cases is so overused i'm trying to figure out if there's a better word for the applications that, yeah. right yeah. so yeah. you have the indoor you have campus environments you have industrial indoor environments campus Correct. meaning it can be outdoors plus That's a combination right. of indoors then yeah. you have the broader let's say public mm -hmm. um domain stuff um, which could have a private element to it. So maybe it's public, like you were saying, with the example of some of the school districts put, standing up uh, stuff on uh, mm -hmm. unlicensed spectrum, right. Uh, CBRS, right? Yeah. Uh, those types of implementations. But, um, you know, I, one of the things that I noticed is that we, we, we talk far too simply about 5G uh, in terms of its benefits. And it, it seems that we need to be very specific about what sort of enterprise application or context we're talking about, mm -hmm. you know? Um, it, it's just something that I noticed. Uh, yeah. Just listening in, on, as well as moderating some of these, these panels and discussions, uh, we've kind of generalized what uh, enterprise uh, 5G is. And um, the other thing that I, I think is really important um, in terms of a differentiator for 5G, uh, it, it, and I want to get your reaction to this. You've already mentioned it, but it's this idea of critical communications. But we oftentimes we talk about it and maybe overemphasize latency. I think you know what's really weird? People don't talk about reliability a yeah. lot. No, it's predictable. They always yeah. front latency. Yeah, and it's like, wait a minute. Um, there's some stuff. There's some critical applications out there that are not latency yep. dependent. Yeah, and uh, and it's actually reliability is a prerequisite to latency, anyways, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't know. I mean, what's your reaction to to that comment or observation? 
so what I would say is this, right, which is that um, when we talked to some of the vendors and we talked to the enterprises, yeah. um, we, we, what we normally say is that is the pre predictability yeah, yeah. It goes first, right? So there's, there's a performance element of it, right? But there's a predictability element of it. And performance is, is sort of an SLA. It's not necessarily just right. pure latency. And you're absolutely right. right. The vast majority of enterprise applications are just fine. You know, they don't need sub 10 millisecond response yeah. time, or sub, you know, 15. Yeah. They're usually happy with, you know, sub 50 or even sub 30, right. which you can get, you know, reasonably uh, with, right. with most, you know, private, even private 4G LTE, not even 5G. And so, I think it's the predictability, the predictability and the coverage. I think that provides right. the value. And I think part of it is that there is a total cost of ownership that needs to be needs to be thought about, right. which is yes. if you want to deploy private 5G today, it may not be at a cost. You have to be aware of the cost and understand that the TCO needs to make sense, right? For what so you're trying to do. Because Wi-Fi, generally speaking on a per AP basis is probably cheaper, but you know, if you have coverage holes and you're putting APs all over the place, or you have reliability problems despite that, then maybe private 4G LTE or private 5G may right. be a better choice, right? From a TCO right. perspective. And I think that's one of the things that needs to be thought through, which is right. private 5G and private 4G LTE can still be a challenge to bring up, yeah. right? For, especially for enterprises not used to it. Right. Yeah, and you know, I, I, one of the things that dawned on me as you were you were going through your long laundry list yeah. <laughs> of yeah. things, which is awesome, by the way, is that you have um, spectrum uh, spectrum options. You know, um, Wi-Fi is fairly limited, and you know, when we talk about five G differentiation, when you look at the various types of enter potential enterprise applications, there's a lot of different Spectrum. I mean, you have low, mid, and high. You have Wi-Fi doesn't have that, right? Different. You have and, you have options. Yeah, if yeah. you can get licensed. If you right, get right. Now that that's a different question. Whether or not you know that that spectrum is available unlicensed that's or right. licensed or shared, that's a different thing. But I think you're absolutely spot on in that you it, the TCO. Is a huge consideration, and I think one of the the first criteria that enterprises, and if this is a recommendation um, mm -hmm. to the CIOs out there, it, it's really looking at some of those critical um, critical connectivity requirements or communications requirements yes. that you have. That's correct. And, right. That's that's correct. Especially in the mobile context, like you were saying, mm -hmm. um, one of the things that wireless brings. Um, by the way, I'm not totally bought into uh, wired is more expensive. It depends, right? That's, I, I, it generally it speaking, entirely depends. Right. Right? It does. It does. And yeah, and and you are correct. It depends. And customers usually like that flexibility. But you mean the flexibility has a cost, right? It uh, does. Right. You right. You move that production machine, you know, mm -hmm. all the time. Are you moving that? Or maybe it's a medical yeah, device. Exactly. Maybe it's a scanner that you want to move. Okay, maybe that makes sense, right? In, in the, in the healthcare go. context. So Love again, it. you are right, which is sometimes we talk to enterprise CIOs and, and I think you have the same experience and they are like, you know, private 5G, that's the greatest without necessarily thinking about all the ramifications, right? You don't have to be on the coolest just because it's cool. It, there are a lot of elements that need to be taken into context, right? Yeah. As you go through the details, right? So yeah, I, absolutely, and and I think there are certain kind of generalizations out there that need to be tested. You know, um, we just can't say uh, everything is cheaper. Um, no, no, in general it's, terms, it, I, it depends I, I, on the use case. case. It depends yeah, on the right, right, right. It depends on the workloads, right? It's yeah. all, all the all the above, right? Right, and and you know, of course, that being said. You know, 5G has its sweet spots today as well as going yep. forward. You just we just have to figure out what those things are. You know, so um, hey, let's. Um, I think um, actually we touched on the next uh, the third question, which is what? Oh, well, no, actually, what enterprise applications do you have you observed, Roy, uh, that differentiate 5G? And really, this is more of a question to characterize. Mm -hmm. um, 5G as being valuable, right? What are some of these things that we're seeing yep. uh, that really um, uh, put a, a spotlight on 5G as being sort of this mm -hmm. special access technology um, versus other options? 
Yeah, no, I think I'm seeing situations where the predict predictability uh, has value um, and where you sort of critical use cases. So industrial manufacturing, we have things like AMR, autonomous mobile robots, right? Or yeah. auto automated, you know, guide vehicles, right? AGVs, uh, those certainly, you know, on a 5G or even the 4G LTE networks, you know, seem to do a little better from a coverage area. So you don't end up, you know, out of coverage yeah. going somewhere. Yeah. Uh, even video surveillance, I'm seeing and talking yeah. to some very large retailers that one video surveillance coming in over 4G LTE or 5G. Right, just yeah. so that they have that reliability and the penetration and coverage. So we're seeing that uh, in the container shipping. You know what they always tell us is, is it, you know, when they're tracking the containers, are tracking, or even the um, the AMRs that go around or AGVs that go around, that they want better coverage for that. Mm -hmm. um, likewise, for push to talk, as simple as sort of PTT, yeah. right? So messaging or safety type thing. Right, right? they want the coverage everywhere. So we're seeing. A lot of these kind of industrial IoT video surveillance, it's it's very similar across the board. Even IoT yeah. sensors, they want that signal, you know, always to get through, with you know, with limited right. risk of channel interference if possible, right? So there's look, right, right. looking at these kind of things where, in some cases, they're even thinking about licensing spectrum to reduce channel interference for very critical right. use cases. Yeah. So I think those yeah. are the ones that I see. And AR, I mean, I I see AR, I, I you know, I. I think AR in an industry oh. context, right? When you're doing fixing yeah. of a device or looking up stuff, sure, I could see that. AR event experience, yeah, probably. They're doing it now, so probably. Uh, well, yeah, you know, I, actually, I'm glad you brought this up. Um, so AR, I, I, I don't know if the industry understands this, but AR has been around for a really long time. Oil and gas, yep. they've been looking at, I mean, uh, you know, uh, views I think you pronounce it Vuzix. They've been around a long time, so they've been uh, they've been developing heads up, industrial heads up displays, you know, uh, you know, head mounted displays. Um, it, 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 but I think the the misconception maybe or the misunderstanding or yeah, let's call it a misconception is that. Uh, that AR for industrial has to be this high fidelity, you know, like digital overlay of like 3D objects and stuff like that. It's not even like that. It's informational. And so, but to have that real t closer to real time, it doesn't, it, most of these applications don't have to be absolute real time. Mm -hmm. uh, some of these head mounted uh, um, AR yep. headsets have cameras on them mm -hmm. and they're used for service. They look nothing like uh, Ray-Bans. Right. They're not right. Ray-Bans. Right. They're not. Uh, they're kind of big, bulky, industrial grade, highly survive <laughs> survivable. Mm -hmm. uh, and also uh, they're, uh, what do they call it? Um, a fire safe, in, in meaning you can wear them on a oil rig mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. without a threat of blowing the thing up because right. you cause a spark, right? So th these devices have been around for a, a long time. And so when we talk about AR, that's what we're talking about. We're not talking about these gaming things. Um, we're, we're talking about some fairly, uh, you know, clunky looking things that you would not take to a fashion ball to right. take selfies. Right. Well, not until or, they get there. Yeah. That's right. Something. And so, yeah. And when you think about that, definitely, um, I think there's most definitely benefits that mm -hmm. cellular communications bring in terms of that reliability or predictability, yes. as you're saying. Yeah. Uh, ultimately, it, it results in reliable, uh, highly reliable industrial grade That's reliability, correct. right? That's the six correct. nines that they always talk. I mean, not even five nines. We're talking about six nines, right? That they talk about. You in terms need of a production reality. process to work. You need, you know, to be able to communicate. Yeah. You're using um, edge computing to control production yeah. line, and you want to run it reliably. Then yeah. you need the kind of network, and and for that, you know, the cost at least initially slightly higher, right? With the cost yeah. makes sense because you end up with a more flexible um, solution and, yeah. and if you're doing, you know, agile or flexible manufacturing, then maybe it makes sense, but uh, yeah, but, but not otherwise. So, but yeah, no, I, I, I think, you know, private 5G is a thing, right? I, I, as opposed to pure hype. I think as yeah, people agree, yeah, yeah. probably a little hype as always, just like everything else. Yeah, you know, I, I think it's, um, you know, I, I just actually finished a, a podcast with uh, uh, Chris Pearson and 5G Americas. Mm -hmm. And yep. one of the things that we talked about is important to understand that 5G is evolution. 
Yes. You know, this is going to take a long time. It's just we need to figure out where 5G is today and yep. then help CIOs right. understand right. what a good roadmap looks like. Mm -hmm. Correct. And, and how to capitalize on uh, on the technologies as they evolve, right? And thank God, a lot of this is uh, a software defined and virtualized, which is right in your wheelhouse. Yeah, it is. No, it is. So, when it all became virtualized, know? we started paying attention, right? And yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, I had AGVs on my list. Uh, we don't need to roll our eyes anymore when we talk about AR. <laughs> Yeah. Now that we've clarified what you know, uh, what that really uh, yeah. looks like practically in an industrial context. Yeah. Um, the other thing I was uh, thinking, and I have seen uh, some interest, and in, this is largely uh, comes about in these uh, discussions around ports and supply chain, uh, mm -hmm. is a remote operations. So mm -hmm. taking right. uh, several of the concepts that you brought up, like mm -hmm. the uh, maybe even computer uh, computer vision with the AI stuff. If you're going to do, um, let's say, inference offloading off mm -hmm. of cameras, correct, or it's just um, video, straight video, and then um, a uh, you know, being able to actuate and control, let's say, cranes or uh, vehicles on the ground, coordinating yep. them. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, doing um, uh, high, you know, precision location um, right. type um, monitoring. And those are the types of things that I think um, have some near term potential um, mm -hmm. uh, that. I, I've seen have been uh, interesting use cases, but again, I mean, this is not just connecting smartphones, right, on campus. It's way, no, it's way more than that. <laughs> <laughs> right, highly engineered stuff. But one of the things that, I, I mean, I really appreciated the, the guys from uh, MXD and Ericsson on my panel where we did talk about URLC, what would the deployment look like, and one of our favorite conversations, is, which is always about assurance. How do you make that happen in an industrial right. context? And yep. they were, and kudos to those gentlemen. Um, they were super honest and that, you know, this, this is all work in process, progress yep. stuff. So as much as we talk about reliability and low latency, yep. there's a lot of work to be done to figure out what those deployments look like and then mm -hmm. how you actually institute this closed loop assurance to ensure that you you're able to uh, deliver on those and you know quite honestly stringent urlc requirements so yeah. th th those are the things that have come out of discussions in the last couple of weeks uh, yeah and i think the key is it's in progress um yeah. it's good to start now and take a look at it because we know yeah. it's coming down the pipe there's no you know that it's going to happen yeah. And understanding, you know, what you can get, when you can get it, and whether it fits your business use case or not, I think that's the key thing. Right. But there's still yeah. a lot of gaps that have to be filled in, um, you know, for the full solution. But that doesn't stop people from using it now because maybe your needs are such that whatever is available yeah. works perfectly for you. And there are a lot of customers for which that works, right? And yeah. for some, some others, maybe you have to wait, or maybe you wait for the cost to come down, or wait for the complexity to drop because we know it's going to happen it's, you know at some point hopefully it'd be like a wi-fi you put an ap you get the controller in the cloud and it just magically yeah, yeah. works like aruba meraki right yeah, you pick yeah. your favorite right right and i right. think the day will come it is coming uh, we just got to work our way there right it, okay well you know speaking of gaps and you've yeah. <laughs> you've cited a few of them already well, yeah. Uh, what, what are some of the other gaps? <laughs> yeah, I think, I mean, deployment complexity is certainly one of those gaps today. Yeah. Right? You, you know, some of the early ones, you have to understand what a 5G C or 4G EPC is, and, you know, and yeah. then you could deploy it. And, and hopefully, you know, if you're trying to do this aggregated, then you're going to do a RUDUCU type thing, right? And you're going to figure yeah. it out. But I think a lot of the vendors are working to make them manage services. So you don't have to think, you just say, here's yeah. my problem. And then they come magically and they solve the problem for you. You just pay a managed fee, right, every month. Right. So I think that's that's one. But that deployment complexity, architectural complexity, I think that's one. Second one is security. There's, there's still some concern about the security elements of it, but I think it that's kind of a yeah. not a big deal to me per se. But there is I, I but with regard to security, there is an identity uh, and the traffic problem, which is people are used to Wi-Fi. And they, they say, oh, I know how to detect rogue APs. I know how to do, you know, wireless intrusion detection. I know how to filter the wireless traffic through something. And they are trying to understand how that reflect, how that maps to a private 5G, right? Where you, yeah. 
when the traffic comes out, the N6 interface or the SGI, if it's 4G, you know, EPC, where's the call? It doesn't come out really on the LAN like the AP. It's a little different. And so they're yeah. still trying to get a hold and understand that. Likewise, on security identity, the SIMs, right? right? SIMs, how do you right, have, exactly. Right? Yeah. How does a SIM map to my active directory, right? I don't know. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah, yeah. How do you do that, right? So they're trying to figure that out. And then device compatibility, not all devices can do it. Like I think iPhone 11s and up have CBRS capabilities, but even then that, that, that support is not ideal because the sophistication of the policy in terms of, you know, which, you know, PLMI, PLMI do you pick first? What's the fallback? You know, do you do that with blended with Wi-Fi? The sophistication is not quite there yet on these mm -hmm. devices. Um, and then the, but the modems are getting better, right? You know, you get your favorite in Seago or Digi or, you know, Cradle Point modem, you know, they're getting smarter and better. So I think that's happening. But I mean, I think the last two things is expertise and skill gap, which is not quite there from an enterprise perspective. Yeah. They understand yeah. Wi-Fi. They don't understand, many of them don't understand 5G. Yeah. And I think the last one is assurance. I think your point, which is how do you make sure that you get assurance of yeah. the service yeah. you paid for? Because you're buying this very often on predictability and SLAs. So mm -hmm. how can you make sure that that actually is being kept and you're getting what yeah, yeah. you're paying for, right? I think that yeah. is for me one of the biggest things that we'll have to yeah. figure out, right? Because yeah, that's... and and maybe not what you it, maybe not even what you pay for, what you implement, because right. you might just you mm -hmm. might have bought the. I mean, it's a private network. It's yeah. your network. It's yeah. just <laughs> is it really reliable? Right. You know, right. It, yeah. You were you were given a promise, right? Does it yeah, do yeah. does it do what right. it says, right? Or maybe you yeah, contracted yeah. with Verizon or AT and T to build it for you right. and operate it. Is it giving you what you think you're supposed to be getting for the price you're paying? I'm right? paying exactly, so, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, I, I I think that well, you you covered all the bullet points that I have. I, I would say maybe the other thing that could help, especially on the reliability front, and uh, just it, is. Um, some some form of <laughs> network slicing, <laughs> right? Yeah. Which is, I mean, a lot of folks talk about uh, network slicing, but it's not necessarily, necessarily a meaningful reality yet. But that's, right. um, yeah. that's one of the things that I think even, um, you, you know, even though it's not end to end can bring some benefit in a lot of different types of scenarios, right? Um, whether you're looking at what you were talking about, it's a carrier hosted thing where, you know, the network yep. slice, is, slice is really for them to kind of mm -hmm. dedicate a slice to an enter a particular enterprise customer or whether it's within a private network and you're slicing the network to support certain types of workloads right. uh, within that uh, let's say an industrial environment, whether it's a factory or a distribution center. So um, that was that would be the only th other thing that I would add. And I really like your points about the security. I, I think you know to, to, to think that it's it's a huge. I, I think the security problems around five G have a lot to do with the overall implementation of the applications right. that. Um, you know, ride on these networks as well. So, you know, um, uh, you know, if you think about it, cellular brings a lot of technology, I mean, uh, security features that the enterprise is not used to, like you were Correct. saying, right? And it's they're a little different. Be pretty, yeah, yeah pretty uh, um, robust if you really think about it com compared to what, uh, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a CIO is uh, used to. But yeah, that, that knowledge gap, got to bridge it. And if it's going to be SIs who help, help make that happen yep. or the operators, yep. yeah, I totally agree yep. with you. Yeah. Um, I think the SIs do have and definitely have a play here for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Definitely. So great. Any Anything else that you wanted to add? It looks like, I mean, what, what's your conclusion here? What What's the state of, of 5G for the enterprise? I, what inning is this, as Chris Pearson likes to say? <laughs> I don't know if it's first or second, but I mean, if you think about 5G, <laughs> right? If it's yeah. 5G, yeah, it's first yeah. or second, right? Realistically, right? I yeah. mean, we're at the beginning of it, right? I mean, barely, yeah. right? So the, there's a long ways yeah. to go, right? There's yeah. a long ways to go, but you know it's happening. You know it's coming. I mean, it's, in the, it's inevitable. You know it's happening. And so the, the question is, can you benefit right now? Or should you yeah, wait, yeah. right? Um, and I think in order to figure that out, you actually have to understand it first, right? So that I think it, behoo it behooves the CIO to actually dig into it and say, so what is it, what's available? Who can I get it from? 
you yeah. know what can i do with it and how much is it going to cost me you awesome. know for the use cases right. i care about and if they yeah. can answer those questions then i think they're in good shape um so i think but it, again it comes down to the use cases right then it's not the right thing for everyone for sure but yeah. but yeah. there is value and you know you can get it today um it's worth taking a look yeah. at I, I i would like to actually run it in in, in my home right so I, I, I'm waiting for my. I'm waiting for my. You, you start manufacturing things. You're going to be manufacturing widgets in your garage. Well, if I, if I can mass take, producing it, silicon. Yeah, with the supply chain. You know, I go. I go to like you know do a fab in my backyard, right? Oh, uh, there you go. <laughs> Extract okay. silicon from sand, right? I, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Well, hopefully we've helped a couple of, uh, if not more, CIOs. Uh, you know. Uh, we, we've helped them uh, figure this stuff out a little bit better and uh, have gotten them on the path to uh, maybe exploring 5G in a way that could uh, help them find these um, valuable applications. I'm not going to use the word killer. It's just valuable applications. And, yeah. and okay. so, yeah. Um, Roy, always a pleasure to have you. Thanks for Likewise. joining me again. Um, you are very you welcome. welcome. Uh, why don't you do this? Uh, tell our audience how they can get in touch with you and uh, tap into all the great knowledge and work that you guys do at AvidThink. Sure. Um, so AvidThink.com is our main website, but we also have something called NextGenInfra.io. So mm -hmm. at N-E-X-T-G-E-N, Infra, I-N-F-R-A.io, where actually a lot of our multi-vendor or industry reports are hosted. And you can check out videos and you can check out the reports there, and we do have a couple of reports that are relevant. Open RAN, we have one. Yeah. We actually have a private mobile networks report, uh, surprisingly, so or unsurprisingly. So we also have one there, and so uh, check it out, and hopefully it's helpful to you. So, yep. Great, thanks so much. And to our listeners and viewers, thanks uh, for attending this session. Um, and um, also, uh, you know, Try checking out the sessions that Roy and I moderated at the um, the E5G Show 2021 event. Uh, you can go to their website. I think it's www.e5gshow.com, yep. and you can register. You can register and uh, watch all the playbacks for some great sessions from that virtual conference. And please subscribe to our YouTube and Apple podcast channels for Rethink and uh, visit us at www.next-curve.com and make sure to subscribe to our research portal. And until next time, be safe, stay healthy, and if it matters to you, have a happy Thanksgiving. Roy, thank, thank you, you so much. You're welcome, always a pleasure. Definitely, and we will see you again. Uh, safe travels, okay, for your holiday. Visit us at www.next-curve.com.